Imagine I just made an entire video where I'm wearing my shirt like this. <laughs> My name is Demands One, otherwise known as Uzi, and today we're going to be talking about a little thing I like to call anxiety. Don't mind, like, the way I'm sitting, there's kind of like a couch right here. Oh, I kind of covered in my fidget spinner video that I have anxiety. My friend Sam, if you're an old school fan of mine, he used to make videos. He was like, I'm very curious to know about your experience with the anxiety. And I was like, sure thing, Sam. Or Lewis, whatever your name is, good talk. I would say I started to develop anxiety after eight, though I always had like anger management issues and like issues with like dealing with my feelings in a more productive, positive way. I started to experience this weird thing in my chest where it felt like I was suddenly stuck inside of a bubble and the air that was going into my lungs was not enough to survive, <laughs> if that makes any sense. In the past, when I was younger, until I would say about the age of 15, 16, is when it stopped being as bad, I would just constantly just like that because it felt like there wasn't enough air. It happened after an incident where I was eating an apple. I just began to choke on the apple. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. I stood up and everything turned blue. I fell to the ground and I started crawling on the floor. And I remember I ran downstairs to my mom and I was crying. And then suddenly, we went to doctors and etc. We were like, okay, well, like, what's wrong with my child because they don't seem to be able to breathe. Oh, my dog. My dog is a barking. She's a barking. So uh, for those of you who don't know because I've never mentioned it, it's not very important except for in this story. Uh, my brother has Crohn's disease and it was just around the time when he got diagnosed and we were on the way to the hospital and on the way to the hospital, the music was playing very loud. I just all of a sudden just couldn't breathe and it ended up being dropping off my brother and also getting me emitted. Just put in a chair and then they wheeled me off to emergency, took a blood test, poked a fucking IV in my my arm. This brought up a whole other issue because IVs terrify me. I have a very irrational fear that the liquid in the IV is going to be so much that it overpowers my blood and makes my arm pop. It's stupid, but listen, who knows, man? And then I went home and the issue just stayed. For the rest of my life, I just can't breathe. As I got older, it progressed into other things. I would be unable to talk. Obviously, I'm a very talkative person, but when you first meet me, I'm rather quiet, and it takes me a little bit to talk because I'm just... When I started in college, it actually took me a while to actually have normal conversations with people because I just wouldn't talk, or I would just listen and I would pitch in like one or two words because I was just so anxious about being around people and it wasn't like a shyness because it's not like I'm particularly shy. I love talking to people and I love having people hear me and listen to me because from perspective of a child who being unable to express myself in a positive way or in a family situation where it wasn't particularly good, I like talking and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Comes and goes, it's not like constant. I'm, I'm looking over at this photo of, of me and my siblings as children if you're wondering what I'm doing. That's another thing is I, I tend to like look away from the camera that's associated with anxiety. Because I like talking, it in itself makes me anxious. I kind of have like a speech impediment in some sort of way. Like I sound kind of like I'm drunk a little bit and it makes me play with my mouth. Sorry, there's a, there was a, there was a car. There was a goddamn car. And I would describe this as the probably the worst form of my anxiety. The breathing issue is is not always constant and it's definitely got a lot better from when I was younger. When I was younger it was almost like every day was like I couldn't breathe and it continued like that until maybe I was like 15, 16 uh, and then it 
progressively got a little better where it's like every second day every other minute so for me that's not really like a thing I was too concerned about but the mouth thing slowly developed into a consequence of talking to people because I was anxious around people but I loved talking to them the more I talked to them the more I fucking got anxious so I started playing with my mouth my mouth would get really dry my lips would get really dry and I would constantly lick and and bite at my lips and my inside of my cheek and etc to the point where it was painful sometimes it would happen for a day sometimes it would happen for a week and sometimes it happens after I eat a certain food. If I eat like a food where the aftertaste stays, it's suddenly something I'm constantly paying attention to and it's very inconvenient. And I know it's irrational and like, hashtag just stop, but like, I can't. Cause it feels like the only thing that'll fix it is if I just, and this is like a little bit horrifying, if I just remove all of my teeth and just grab sandpaper and just sandpaper my gums because it feels like my teeth are like blocking my ability to be able to fix whatever's in my mouth so what i would do is i would chew on really minty gum the gum made my mouth feel fresher and and not as like it feels like my mouth is dry and i started brushing my teeth more like vigorously vigorously is that the word whatever intensely uh don't make this motion on camera someone might gif it into a penis i can't buy like those like special like made for your teeth toothbrushes y'all i have to buy like those old school like one straight bristle format thing classic toothbrush etiquette what if like i, I had filmed the entire video with like my hair up and then like midway through i just like put it down and just expected y'all to accept it without saying a word. No one outrightly was like, you have anxiety and this is, this is how it works and how to fix it and etc. Um, no one did that for me for a very long time until like maybe when I was a teenager. And uh, when it finally happened where someone was like, ah oh, shit, dude, you have, sounds like you have anxiety or something. Could be that maybe i was like oh shit thank you for letting me know on that little detail that could have i don't know done something to help me in the long run how i've dealt with it is i've just been positive uh it's like a long time coming maybe you know i should just be happy instead of being weird and angry all the time yeah okay i have anxiety and it sucks but i can then make videos about it so other people can relate to it and be like fucking i also sense the bubble breathing issue in myself what gets me is like when i'm doing that i'll be like <gasps> and fucking this thing and it's like shit man like it could only go so far in before it fucking rips imagine if i had like a hole there but like was smoking something and something more air from my body man don't get tracheas. <laughs> it's not the answer. <laughs> now I've just had it for such a long time that it's a part of me. I'm low key glad that when I was a kid, no one said what it was because I just like accepted it and acted like nothing's wrong. And so far, you know, that's kind of worked out. That doesn't have to work out for you, but it worked out for me. Ignoring my problems 101. Let me know what you think, your thought, your demons, Ten Commandments on the subject, and I will be sure to reply if I am inclined to reply. And as always, stay Gucci, my friends. I'll see you later. You've just had the almost imponderable joy of watching Charlie- Wait. Oh, sorry, wrong video, wrong video. Uh, oh crap, how do I do the outros for your video again? Ah, oh, dang. Man, I'm really sorry, Demands One. I just... It's not gonna work out. Um, I, like and subscribe, I guess. I don't know what else to say. Sorry, uh, I quit. Stay Gucci.